I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House. This week we are checking out how one architect created a zen-like retreat in Westchester. And we explore this sprawling designer showstopper in Midtown. We go inside the stylish Newark, New Jersey home of the restaurateur behind the bustling Red Farm Eatery. Plus, we're at this impressive estate designed to recall a luxury yacht. But first, we check out this architectural gem in Bel Air. What's interesting about this space is that I put cello strings running down the hallway, essentially turning the building into a musical instrument. Welcome to Open House. Today I'm coming to you from this palatial duplex penthouse on Manhattan's Upper East Side. This airy five bedroom home celebrates a traditional layout where each space has a defined purpose from the living room to the dining room. The marble floors of the entry give way to herringbone wood, while archways and crown moldings add architectural interest to the entertaining spaces. And these large windows keep everything bathed in natural light. And speaking of light, upstairs features a unique solarium where you can bask in the sun or relax in the moonlight all year round. At the end of the day, you'll retire to this corner master suite with iconic Central Park views. We'll reveal the price of this 3,700 square foot home at the end of the show. But if you're feeling inclined, send us your guesses at Open House TV. Let's kick off today's show in Bel Air, Los Angeles with architect David Hertz. This unique light-filled home was meant to invoke a sense of serenity as you pass through it. The home alternates between a calming embrace and an exciting release into wide open entertaining spaces. We join David for a closer look. Hi, my name is David Hertz and I am an architect. My studio is called the Studio of Environmental Architecture in Venice Beach and we are at the Stone Canyon uh, Reservoir House. The exterior is uh, steel troweled, integrally pigmented stucco. Come on, let's get inside. I can't wait to show you around. So I'm in the living room and we've just come through the front door into a compressed entry where a curved wall goes all the way from the outside through the entire house into a high volume living room. And the idea is to have the warmth of the wood, but the height of this square windows that bring the light and the floor finishes in, whether it's the floor of the entry, which is the stone extending in and dovetailing into the wood floor. The main living room is a space that's bounded by a bar that separates the kitchen from the living room, and then a dining room that has a water wall that separates it from the street in the front of the house. So here we are in the kitchen, and the kitchen is very much the center of the home. I designed a light well that goes through the second story, actually through the bathroom, that becomes a translucent light column, and it brings daylight into the kitchen. The kitchen transitions quite nicely into the breakfast nook and is separated by a sculptural fireplace and then an elevation change that brings you into the family room. Coming out of the elevator on the second floor landing, the first thing you notice is the curved wall that runs through the house has a large opening in it. On the opposite side of the curved wall is a master suite that is separated by a large door that isolates the whole landing from that suite. That suite has a living room seating area separated by a fireplace into the master bedroom, which is a continuation of the curved wall, which has the warmth of wood and is projected and cantilevered right into a mature grove of pine trees. And then the bathroom room is a large open space that's separated by the light column that brings light down into the kitchen. But what's interesting about this space also is that I put cello strings running down the hallway, essentially turning the building into a musical instrument. We're now at the back of the house and the intent of the house was really to open up into the landscape and so we cantilevered the whole master bedroom into the grove of trees. Also, this whole edge had been landscaped, and so we pushed the edge down, uncovered this tree amongst the brush, and made it a sculptural focal point, and then have the whole house open to the view. 
and to the reservoir below, creating a naturalistic swimming pool that from above mimics the natural reservoir down below. Thanks so much for joining me on the tour of the Stradella Roadhouse. It's uh, rewarding to see a project that was one of my early projects all the way back from 1994 and how timeless and how well lived and enjoyed it is. So thank you and I look forward to seeing you on a future project next time. Coming up in just a few, a modern estate inspired by a yacht. Stick around. Welcome back to Open House. Now we're in the Brentwood section of Los Angeles at this sprawling estate that was designed for both wellness and entertaining. The home features distinct architectural elements, a curved facade inspired by a yacht, a glass tiled infinity edge pool, and a curved sculptural staircase, among many other memorable details. And let's not forget those views. Welcome to 12255 Skylane. My name is Sanam DeLoren from DeLoren Associates and it is my privilege to show you this magnificent property on top of the hillsides of Brentwood. It was created by my father and I. You have the view of downtown Los Angeles all the way to the Pacific Ocean. There is a lot of flow and energy inside this house, so let's go explore it together. Follow me. Once inside, you're greeted by this beautiful walnut sculpture and this live green wall. The green wall is about 12 feet high and it's a natural air filter. Once you've taken in these beautiful sculptures, you're going to head into the main room. This space offers a variety of seating and entertaining options. You can sit by the fireplace with a friend or entertain hundreds of your closest friends here. The walnut bar structure was all hand carved. The curves of this beautiful sculpture leads to the heart of the house, the kitchen. The kitchen is dark and moody and it has this luxurious black Calcutta marble that's very rare. I created the kitchen like that on purpose so that the food would be the showcase and the star. Every large home needs a cozy family room to retreat to, and this one is one of the best. We created the ultimate cozy space by texturing the walls with 3D paint and adding these beautiful cabinets that cantilever off the wall and are all backlit. At night, it looks spectacular. Even though this floor has a lot to offer, there's still so much more to see. Next stop, the entertainment level. The bottom level is dedicated to entertainment. We brought the dark tones downstairs to create an atmosphere of fun and sexiness. We have a movie theater room that can seat 15 people, perfect for an Oscar viewing or just the family getting together and watching their favorite film. The lower level also offers a gym and a sauna and tucked away under the pool is the game room. There's definitely a lot of fun things to do down here, but when you want to relax and unwind, you'll head to the master level, let's go. Welcome to the master, where luxury meets tranquility. This level starts with two junior masters, and if you follow the hardwood floors down the hall, it leads you to a beautiful master suite with two closets. One of my favorite things about this house is the two layers of facade. There is the building, and then there is this beautiful curve that wraps the building around, and it creates these incredible panoramic views, incredibly unique and special for this house. In California, we're lucky enough to be able to spend most of our time outdoors. And I wanted this backyard to have all the amenities you would have inside the house. And an added bonus, you have a 70-foot infinity edge pool that overlooks this incredible view. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey. I had a great time. I hope you did too. See you at my next project. Coming up just after the break, we are with a New York restaurateur at his refuge in the city of Newark. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Now we're in Newark, New Jersey with Ed Schoenfeld. The home was built over 100 years ago, but was lovingly renovated with interiors by rising design star Sasha Bykoff, who, as regular viewers know, has been featured numerous times on Open House. This project shows off her bold use of color while maintaining original architectural touches and highlighting Ed's vast collection of furnishings and artwork. Take a look. Hi, my name's Ed Schoenfeld, and I'm the owner and creator of Red Farm and Decoy Restaurants. And we're here at my home in the Forest Hills section of Newark, New Jersey. So our house is a Georgian Revival house built in 1908. Our house is very ornately detailed on the outside with an elaborate limestone doorway and beautiful brickwork and shutters with half moons in them. Come on in, we'll show you around. Here we are in the beautiful foyer and entryway of our house. This room features seven different archways. Uh, also original to the house are these fantastic old sconces. The switches on them are original Thomas Alva Edison switches. The living room is a, a room that we hang out in every day. It's a great place for sitting and talking the way the chairs are arranged. The motif here is pink and white with accents of blue and green. One of the really greatest parts of the living room are the big windows and the views of the beautiful garden. Let's go take a look. Our garden is like a little private oasis. I'm in the restaurants every night, it's loud, it's cacophonous, and then suddenly I come home and I, I hear the sound of running water. The garden has different sections. We have a curving pathway and a beautiful statue. Over on the other side of the garden, we have a beautiful flower bed. In the other corner, we have a hot tub. In the back, we have a gazebo with a little bridge. There's not too much in life that I want that I can't get right here. As you can imagine, as a restaurateur, the dining room was one of the most important parts of our house. I think what makes a good dining room is having a table and chairs that are the right size so that the, all the people at the table can relate and talk to one another. So right here we have this swinging door, the kind you'd see in a restaurant. In fact, it's the entrance to our kitchen. A well-designed kitchen is one where everything is very easy to reach and convenient. You don't have to walk around too much. That's not necessarily the case in this kitchen. Things are still close enough and there's enough expansiveness to enjoy yourself in this kitchen. I love to cook every day if I can. I'd say in the last 50 years, I've probably cooked 98 or 99% of the days. Thanks so much for coming to visit us at our Newark home. Four stars for me. So any guesses on the price of this home I'm in right now? 3,700 square feet, five bedrooms, Upper East Side of Manhattan. We'll reveal it at the end of the show, but just ahead, see how one designer reflected the colors of the city in the decor and materials used in this modern, luxurious, sky-high apartment. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Midtown Manhattan at a modern residence fashioned by designer Nicole Fuller. Nicole wanted her decor choices to reflect the city in both the color and natural materials. The result is a home that feels classic yet sleek, sophisticated and always glamorous. Check it out. Hi, I'm Nicole of Nicole Fuller Interiors. Welcome to the Baccarat Residences here in the heart of New York City. I complemented the spectacular, undisrupted views by bringing the outside in, mirroring many of the silver buildings and bringing soft hues throughout. You truly feel as though you're floating about this magical city. Let's go take a look. You walk into this beautiful home in a small intimate entryway which is wrapped in a metallic striate Italian plaster. I topped it off with a beautiful crystal Baccarat chandelier. It allows this grand reveal into this beautiful great room. 
the first thing you'll see are these incredible views, which in my opinion are art on their own, and of course give us a very natural backdrop. I also treated the walls with a high polish Italian plaster, which was custom designed. It captures the light as it dances throughout the space like a fabulous Broadway show. For more formal dining, I created this custom dining table out of one large slab of wood. For the seating, I truly believe there should be no compromise between comfort and style. Therefore, each one of these dining chairs has arms and is fully upholstered, wrapped in a very luxurious texture. It's important that your guests never want to leave and your dinner parties are unforgettable. Adjacent to our magnificent dining room is this seriously sexy, fully equipped chef's kitchen. As you step in, you immediately see the iconic Empire State Building. What better view could you ask for? Again, to emulate the view outside, the cabinetry is finished in high polished silver with crosshatch details. And inspired by the ever moving textured clouds outside, the countertops are white iceberg granite. One of my favorite moments of the kitchen is the floating bar. It's the perfect place to start your day and also is the perfect place to end your day with a glass of wine while looking at the city lights and the twinkling stars in the distance. There are three chic and very cozy bedrooms in this home. As you'll notice, in the master bedroom, there is no art on the walls. I wanted to keep it serene and quiet and harmonious for my client. What I consider art in this room is the suede wall, which acts as a second headboard behind the master bed. I again used high polished Italian plaster, which really accentuates the glorious ceiling heights in the space. Since Bergdorf is right around the corner, I used that as a jumping off point for a very, very special master closet. We wrapped the frame in burlap and paired it with custom crystal cut handles to add another layer of elegance. We reconfigured the master bath in order to incorporate a custom vanity, which acts as a second window, bringing the view in from across the way. I was able to incorporate double vanities covered in honed Lido white marble. And the bathtub is perfectly placed in the center of our floor to ceiling windows, so you can feel as though you're floating while bathing on top of this magical city. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute thrill. I look forward to seeing you soon. Coming up after the break, a serene escape from the city that truly embraces adaptive spaces. Stick around, you'll want to see this. Welcome back. Now we're in northern Westchester at a home that is as much a state of mind as it is an impressive estate. Nestled upon a wooded landscape and overlooking a pond, the home has been dubbed the Beckoning Path for the contemplative walks it encourages through its serene grounds. We join architect Alan Barless for a closer look. We're in Westchester County about an hour north of New York City. I'm Alan Barless of Barless Wedlock Architects, and I'm thrilled to be able to show you around. This is called the Beckoning Path. It's named after this network of amazing walkways that live in this 40-acre garden surrounding Kobamong Pond. And nestled among this private arboretum was a house that I turned into a house slash wellness retreat. One of my client's passions is Tai Chi, so we had to create the perfect environment for him to leave behind city life, unite with nature, and find serenity and peace. And you know you're being transported when your path takes you onto a bridge that literally lifts you up and onto your front door. And inside, I continued the bridge, but this time in glass, to suspend you as you get oriented to the house. Look at these timbers. You can't find anything like this today. These were originally cut, sawn, and assembled by boat builders in Denmark, shipped to the site, and reassembled here in the early 60s. Remember when I said this used to be a house? Well, this was the living room. Today, it can be a living room. Flexibility was one of our major goals. And it can also be a yoga studio, a film production facility, or a performance hall. But to get the full appreciation of this pavilion in nature, we made sure the walls could open up. This kitchen is simple and minimal and open to the views, but also can be flexible and completely shut off when quiet things are going on next door. And to complete the main floor, there's a third studio that can also be used as a master bedroom. 
Downstairs there's a gym. We tucked a theater deep into the rock. There's four other rooms that could become therapy rooms, meeting rooms, or even bedrooms, each with their own relationship to the outside. And from here, I can continue my journey along the beckoning paths. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're still curious about the price of this stylish Upper East Side gem, well, here it is. Were your guesses close? Let us know on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Open House TV. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?